this mine was is the only one out of the 70 or so major mines that were up here during the Comstock era. It is the only one still open. Uh, and, and it has taken a hell of a lot of effort to keep it. Then we're going to go back to the stope. That's where they did the actual work. Okay. Now, this mine was one of the most productive up here. This mine, in the course of its lifetime, from 1859 until the turn of the century thereabouts, this mine made $17.3 million. That's when it was 20 miles up to the shafts, the stopes, and, uh, and drifts. And so it was uh, very, very successful. She's coming down. Oh, that's just the fucking that's what I <laughs> Look at the weight on this. Yeah. She's coming apart. Yeah, she is too, rocking this up. whole thing is coming down. <laughs> Okay, we're well, they're transitioning. Okay, good, okay. <laughs> Car mine, looks like she's in trouble. That's the least of my worries is the spiders. <laughs> There's a bar in here, right? Yeah, I heard there was Come on back. <coughs> We're heading for a stope on the Comstock. On the Comstock. We're 100 feet underground looking for a stope. Oh, there's a wedge. in a bit of a stope and here's the winch shaft that's a very small winch a very small winch and it goes up here to a shiv wheel a shiv wheel way up at the ceiling and then it's going to go down this incline every time i stop and start breathing like that people go why are you breathing like that like, so i can live <laughs> first of all i'm 78 years old that's all collapsed but that goes down COPD. Doing a good job, sir. I think everybody that has COPD suffers from it, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, see, I didn't quit smoking until 1993. So it's eventually caught up with me. So Anyway, this is what they call a stope. Now, you came in through what we call a drift. In that place else in the world, it's a tunnel. But in the mining, it's called a drift. 
and you came back to where they found an ore body, and this is called a scope. This is where they did the actual work. Now, when they came in here, they didn't have the benefit of powered tools. That didn't occur until after 1870. All they had was a piece of steel called a jack, blown on one end, pointed at the other, hold it into the ore face. Yeah. And for eight long hours a day, pound, turn, pound, turn, pound, turn. If one person operated the drill, it was called a single jack. If two people operated the drill, it was called a double jack. But if three people operated the drill, it was not called a triple jack. It was a government project. <laughs> And that took them all, sometimes a whole eight hours to drill enough holes for the explosives. Now, for light, they couldn't bring anything in this mine that was going to give off a gas like carbon monoxide. So like carbide so, lights and stuff? So, since 1859, until the invention of the carbide lantern, all they had to deal with was a candle. Now, you wouldn't think offhand a candle would give you that much light. Unless you find yourself in an environment like this one, yeah. where this candle is the only thing between you and total dark. The main shaft in this mine was 1,640 feet, compared to some of the other mines across the canyon. Everything that came into this mine had to come down to that main shaft. It was the only way you could access the mine from the surface. And that was powered by a hoist works. A hoist works like a series of elevators powered by steam machinery up on top. The hoist operator's job was to bring the various cages, or elevators if you will, various cages up and down, bringing the miners to the various 13 different levels of this mine, as well as machinery that had to be taken back up to be sharpened and brought back down again. That hoist operator's job was so important that if he was distracted or lost his focus, people could get killed, and that did happen. For that reason, if you tried to talk to him while he was on duty, you were fired right on the spot. That's how serious it was. The shaft at one time was 250 feet straight down. I believe it. That's now this was an access which, which is deeper than this, right? There's what? That's so it was, it was deeper than it is now. Oh yeah, this oh. was 250 feet. This was filled in, we surmise, at the beginning of World War II, when all these mines were shut down. So this was an access shaft to access the stope below us. So, because remember they were stacked up like apartment buildings. Yeah. So we went ahead and this was filled in. Now what they would do, once they blasted out that stope, they would bring it to this level and then bring it up here by this very large, one of a kind bucket. Now this bucket powered after 1870 I got compressed air with this switch. Wow. Now, here's the way it would work. Waste and break. The winch operator would be standing by there. Now, he didn't have to be as focused as the uh, the other. The main one. Yeah. yeah. For every ounce of gold taken on this mine, 100 ounces of silver. Wow. So now you know why we're known as a silver state. Yeah. So, hoist operator is standing, standing by there. Once he filled up that bucket, he had they pulled on a rope. Two bells. All right, Jake, bring it on up. Got here. One bell. Dump it in the ore carts. Got it out of here. Three bells. Means, all right, you guys, you better get out of the way down there. We're going to lower the bucket. And that bucket breaks loose and hits somebody down there. It's going to be your fault, not ours. Maybe that's what they said. Yeah. Get the idea. Yeah. And indeed, there were times when buckets would break loose, not necessarily here, but in other mines, and hit somebody down there, kill them. And that would be normally referred to as a major violation of the Sense of Humor Act. <laughs> now, once you got compressed air to the mines, now you didn't need that piece of steel anymore and a mallet. Now you have these jack drills. Powered by compressed air. Which started all this, began back in eight, 
three to five million years ago. Contrary to popular belief, I wasn't here at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hear you. He's always making fun of me because I'm the oldest one. I could have had him busted for elderly abuse. I don't know. He a slingshot all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, this was all volcanic, where Lake Tahoe was all glacial. But this was volcanic. The volcanic activity created a quartz outcropping from Mount Davis. That quartz outcropping created a fault that ran from Mount Davison all the way across the canyon. Here, I'm shooting. We following? There's the fault. Now, back in 1859, actually 1849, miners on their way to California passed through here. But they were more interested in what was going on in California. They weren't too interested in what was going on here. Although they knew it, they did notice when they came up the old canyon, they found gold on the ground. Well, that gave them some sort of an indication might be something here. But then again, the they were on their way to California, weren't paying much attention to it. Although they did stop long enough to create the mining camp and take down in the valley. So now they're making their way to California. Fast forward 10 years to 1859. Miners now on their way back because he discovered they weren't going to make a million dollars in two hours. They came back and more and more settlers coming west. The Embry Trail. Broken dreams and empty pockets. There's what? Broken dreams and empty pockets. Yep, that's exactly right. So, remember there was gold here. So they started mine, came up here, they found the gold they were looking for, and they started their buster operation, using sluice boxes and using water from underground springs. And they're doing quite well. Not bad at all. Except the deeper they went, the harder it was for them. That plus the fact they kept running into this bluish gray clay. But when it got wet, it was gooey and sticky and just clung to everything. Is that glacial till? Or There's what? Is that glacial till? No, it's the ore. Anyway, so it, it became such a pest, they had piles of this stuff laying around because it was absolutely worthless. Piles of like here and here. Until one day, somebody got curious and took some of that bluish gray clay down to Grass Valley, California to have it as a I'm about to tell you a holy Moses jumping Joseph's moment if there ever was. That stuff they were throwing away as waste. That saved $3,000 a ton in high grade soap. Holy Moses jumping Joseph. That's what, like uh, th yeah. three ounces a yard? Yeah. And so that really drew people to the to the washroom. Now, by 1860, 1861, this place was a rip-roaring mining camp unlike anything anybody had ever seen before. In fact, somebody wrote this beautiful little the prize in the back right then. There were 30, um, my mind's not quite clean yet. There were 88 violent deaths in this town before somebody spoiled it all by dying of natural causes. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> but by 1862, 63, 64, by the time Nevada was made a state in 1864, Virginia City was quite cosmopolitan and quite civilized. Our past is still our present. You go east of here, just four miles down the road here, you're going to come to the Immigrant Trail. And if you cross that trail between 1860 and 1861, you had to look both ways to make sure you weren't run over by a Pony Express rider. So it's all still here. And that's why it's so important for us to keep this mine open. Because it is the only link to our mining past when this place was known as the richest place on earth. So that's our story. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, very oh, much. Goodness, you bet you. Awesome. Much. I'll never forget it. Thank you, you got a wonderful family. Tell people yeah. you, can, you get back to Vancouver, send them our way. Of course. All the this is the inside of a water pump. But this thing was inside it, and it had pressure either coming out there or. 
Ontario for bear hunting back in the day. I guess water goes in the center. I don't want it. Yeah, it is milk. I am the white one can the water is crystal clear and the beer is pretty strong. Really good beer, strong beer. Yeah, yeah. that is right. Look at this pressure thing. That's the top of a boiler. This that's a piece of a boiler. He's got a lot of shiv wheels here. He, all of these wheels are at the top of a hoisty dilly compressor over there. Oh, and the train runs right by. Golly, you get a nice photograph of it from right here. Across the way is the combination shaft. All that material came from that's a shaft that's 3,000 feet down and they thought they would come up with ore but they didn't not very much and it was very low grade so the Comstock runs right beneath us the it's a big it's on an angle like the ore body was pretty much the same angle it was on like a 45 degree dip which is about the same as that that pile right there and it just it just ran through this whole area here's a five stamper just like they have over in Skidoo. Look at that. They quite proudly put their name on that, eh? <laughs> so when they made these castings in, in these eras, this was made in the 1860s, and when they made castings, these would have been carved out of wood and laid in the sand before they made this piece. And here's the big, the big gate doors. This is just amazing. These two, all the pieces are still in here. I don't understand why there's wood in there though. And I wonder if that's ore or product uh, from above here. Pretty neat. And these were the these were the guides. Stockton. Bunch of stamps here, whole bunch of them. Just a pile and pile of stamps. My goodness, he's got a lot of gear. This looks newer. This looks that looks 40s or 30s. You got all these little tiny. These are tram buckets. These are these are from a tramway. There's a, a small skip car. Boy, that's about a dozen stamps and a whole bunch of them are all bent. I don't know how you would get one bent like that. Probably saved it from rolling down a mountain. Look at this thing. This is, it's an upside down something. i make what that is. Great stuff. Oh, here's some more big pieces of the stamp mill. Can you imagine how heavy these things were? And they hauled these things up the hills. Have a good one, man. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, these are the stamps right here. This is the frames of them. Here they are. These are the side posts. This is more than... Um, yeah, this is a double banker. This is, this is uh, the three main lit uprights. And so let's see if any of these ones match it because it's got a, uh, a wear position in the middle. There has to be a wear position out at the end. This would have had the wooden dealing on it but this one here if it's if it is these three this is an end ender one and this would be the, these two look like the main well that one's got it too so one of these is upside down we got another train coming i hear a train yeah they held these things went across them And we're standing on a waste rock pile from the Comstock. Like it almost sounded like there was a second one, but I know that's just a trick. These are pieces of it. There's these things hold the weight of it. And I don't know what this deal is. Well, hey, if we get down to there, you can just reverse the footage. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's pulling out? You would hear it. I uh, know there's a second one. There's a second one.
They got two trains running today. Can you possibly hold this for me? Look at all this. Uh, I still need to get a day. To go to the right? Yeah. Right after this thing passes, we'll go to something. You're not recording. It's broken. And this there's an ore bin that got crushed. <laughs> I wonder if this is their technique of balancing this thing. Probably is. You make the thing, then you try and balance it and you start drilling out on the high side. Oh and here's here's a metal rope they called it called it. Steel rope. And they came to this um shape. This is for a very, very heavy one. This thing is a very heavy lift, this piece here. Big, big bucket. And they came to this shape so they could get the most of it on a on a wheel. Here's a Pelton wheel. How y'all doing? Good, Good morning, sir. All kinds of different things here. This is a monitor. It wasn't really around here, I don't think. I used too much of this around here. Smaller ore cars, beautiful ore cars. This was a skip car. This thing went up a this thing went up a hoist. This looks like the bottom of a of a crusher right here. Looks like the bottom gate of a uh, hammer mill, and these look like the hammers. With the replaceable shoes at the bottom. Yeah, they don't have their shoes on them. There's another skip car that went up an incline shaft, and this this was up on the side of a of a stamp mill. It's a piece of that. That's the bottom of it of a two stamp yeah this is a two stamp mill right here and there's your two there's your axle there's your drive there's your drive wheel there's your two stamps and all you'd have is a small bucket like that so that was a small little one so these two things are off of a monitor this is a miniature little classifier here look at this a little crusher of some kind or no 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 you know what this is this is a smelting this is from a big operation that's their uh, smelting pot deal. Over here, this rock with all the holes in it, that's probably from a competition. How you doing? Pretty good. Little ore cart back there, like it, like it. Great ore cart here from later era. And there's um, a hoisting bucket, that's about a 4,000 pound lift capacity, that guy. Kinds of stuff in here. Here's a drill. That's almost like a stoping drill. A little bit of a hoist over here. Oh, these are all jacks. Yeah, he's a Where you got from? Oh, heavy this thing is. Oh, okay. Give me 